this live video would start soon. Thank you for your patience. Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody. That's not cool. Hey, everybody. This is Katie Alt. Thanks so much for watching my live show, We Care Live, where I interview local businesses and um, entrepreneurs and people about how this pandemic is affecting them, what kind of tools they're using to adapt, and what we need to know now. Um, I am the broker owner of a small boutique independent real estate brokerage firm. If you didn't already know that, it's called CARE, or Katie Alton Associates Real Estate. And we have contact list listings and uh, sales strategies right now during the coronavirus party. So, I have a really special guest today for episode four, and his name is David Miller, and he is a CPA with Aspire CPA Group and Accounting, and I'm going to bring him on now. I think this is going to be really great for you guys because of all the recent um, changes with when your taxes are due and everything like that. Oh, and real quick before I bring David on, I wanted to say thank you to all of those who are out there working, all of the service providers and police officers and nurses and truck drivers and Walmart grocery clerks and everybody who's helping us get um, stay keep moving during this crazy time. So thank you, and I'll bring David on, and I'll give you a powerful message at the end. Hey, David. Hey, how's it going? How's everybody? Great. Uh, just hanging out at home, you know, the usual. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, I'm honored uh, to be episode four. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So everybody, David is my CPA and he's freaking awesome. So I really wanted to bring him on here, not only just to get uh, give us an update on how he's adjusting his business to all of the recent changes, but also to what we need to know, um, you know, to help all of us save money with our own personal and business taxes. And I just wanted to say before you start that David has paid for himself a million times over and uh, his services are very well worth it. I am probably the only real estate agent getting a refund this year. So there's that, <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah, so tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Like Katie said, my name is David Miller. I'm a CPA and financial advisor. Um, I'm a partner and co-owner at Aspire CPA Group. We are a tax and advisory firm. Um, like you mentioned, I work with a lot of small business owners, uh, primarily doing tax planning, um, tax advisory work. I have a lot of individual clients as well. Um, but we work very heavily with real estate agents, brokers, associate brokers, and a lot of real estate investors, which I imagine there's a lot of real estate investors on this call. So um, definitely know the business well. Katie's fantastic. So um, obviously uh, seek her out for, for any future good buys. A lot of things are on sale right now. So it may be a right. good opportunity. So Yeah, um, I've been seeing some, some good stuff pop up lately. But um, but yeah, this is a rough time. I mean, you know, this pandemic essentially is squeezing everyone's business, um, ours included. You know, we're kind of like financial advisors. We'll do really well when clients do well and vice versa. And so, um, you know, really, we've just got to, you know, obviously have a lot of hope and, and hope that this is a, a short lived process. Uh, but at the same time, you know, try and take advantage of the fact that, you know, income will be down for a lot of folks this year. And the silver lining is, you know, having some opportunity to take advantage of that from a tax standpoint. So there's definitely a lot of things that that we can do that we work with our clients on to really maximize that tax efficiency. Um, I don't know, for those of you that are following the news, there's been a couple of really big updates that have gone out. If you were to Google IRS notice 2020-18, that's the most recent um, most recent notice that went out. And so basically what that did was it extended the due date from April 15th to July 15th for not only the returns, but also payments for 2019. And then as well as 2020 quarter one payments. So for those of you guys that submit quarterly payments, uh, those are also extended to July. Um, and then Governor Kemp spoke yesterday, and Georgia actually also adopted those deadlines as well. 
Um, so that was, so that's a positive thing. So people are, I think are just keeping cash in their pockets a little bit longer, trying to delay, delay those payments. So, um, it's really just based on the taxpayer and what their preference is. So, um, but it's a good time to, you know, if things are tight and if business is slowing down, just to keep a little bit more cash in your pockets. So, oh, I lost you. It's okay. I'm there you good. Are. I'm, yeah, I'm still good. trying to figure out how to stream the video on my personal page and my business <laughs> page because I stream for the business one. So I try to pull it up on my phone and tag it, but we'll yeah. have to figure that out. So if anybody knows how to do that, please let me know. I think I just made a comment seven times in a row to <laughs> James saying hello. So like, I'm really excited. Hey, James. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I think that's so important because I pay quarterly taxes. And I think mine actually just went out because I try to do everything early, you know, or on time. And so I yeah. just saw it go out the other day, but, but and it's that's just based cool. on, yeah, it's based on the tax payment. I mean, a lot of people just don't want to delay the inevitable and they feel like they're on top of it. So it's just a personality thing. Other people like to, you know, keep the money buried in their backyard until they absolutely have to write the check, which is fine. There's no right or wrong answer. It just depends on the taxpayer. So I try and do my best to adopt, you know, their position and work with them on that. So, yeah. um, but, um, but yeah, so that's kind of the updates on the tax front. There's a couple unemployment updates, but um, if anyone has kind of questions on that, I can go into that as well. So, what do you think about? Um, I know two things that people were asking me recently is yeah. yeah. Oh well, I guess for myself too. It does. Do you think this will slow down people's tax refunds, or do they have to be on time? Yes. Yeah, so um, I actually filed personally within the last two weeks. And um, right when stuff was starting to get a little out of hand, so I actually filed a lot earlier than I usually do. Um, and Georgia came back really quickly. So oh, yeah. kudos to them. Federal is still, I actually checked today, it's still kind of processing. So yeah. um, I think it certainly will delay refunds to a certain degree. But, um, you know, from a business standpoint, I think a lot of people are at home now. And so mm -hmm. it's... You know, everyone's saying, okay, well, it's probably a good time to revisit my will, good time to file my taxes. Everything yeah. that I usually kick to the curb is, you know, front and center. So we've been, you know, inundated from a client standpoint, but we're, we're excited for the opportunity to be working and, um, yeah. and to be up, up and running. And, you know, with technology, we can do so much at home, obviously, yeah. doing this. Actually, so. that's such a great point because everything that you're behind on that's stressing you out forever and you have to go to work and you come home too tired. Yeah. Now's a great time to look over your books if you're behind on your taxes or whatever. And let me just mention that I swear this is so sad, but QuickBooks honestly used to make me cry. Like, and I don't really cry, but I would like just about cry from trying to do QuickBooks before I met <laughs> Dave Miller. Seriously. And so he hooked me up and gave me like QuickBooks lessons in the conference room with a big screen to where I really enjoy it. Like he's like, do you want me to handle these? And I'm like, actually, I just want to play with it because I like to look at it. It makes all different kinds of spreadsheets. And now I have friends in the business that I'm like, oh, do you want me to take a look at your QuickBooks? I got this, you know. That's it's like super user game. friendly. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, like I, you know, a lot of CPA firms handle books on a monthly basis. I really prefer and try and empower my clients to handle it themselves because honestly, the more that they're in tune with their business, the more profitable they're going to be. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really simple thing that, you know, we try and, and use our limited resources on planning things that are really value added. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for mentioning that. That's, That's good. Cool. Yeah. And I think also if you're not set up on QuickBooks, does it, I don't know if this is true, so I don't want to say the wrong thing, but yeah, Sometimes you might have like a coupon code or something if they connect to get it a better deal on it, right? Yeah, I know they, I had it before we met. Yeah, QuickBooks, they've, you know, they went from this whole desktop, just kind of like, um, you know, a lot of, you know, Microsoft applications went from desktop based to online based. And so they yeah. charge you monthly. It's pretty reasonable. I think most people in the service business, whether they're, you know, um, I guess, you know, you probably have a lot of investors and, and, and agents that work with you on the service business. You can pretty much purchase the most basic type of QuickBooks. Um, so it's really a pretty minimal cost from, yeah. uh, from a client base standpoint. I know that when I first started, um, I had 
a QuickBooks that was probably like better for an Uber driver or a different kind of business. And then I had to upgrade to a different version yeah. of QuickBooks. Yeah. So if you're thinking about getting QuickBooks, you might want to just give David Miller or, or a, a quick call or an email so that he can lead you in the right way. Because I definitely got like a year into the wrong version of QuickBooks. And that's why it used to make me cry. I would spend like an entire day. But once you get it set up and you learn how to use it, you can run reports so easily. I mean, if if I want to go and get a loan to buy a building or if I want to just know, I can run a quick report and know exactly what's going on with my business at any moment on my phone. Too. Oh, you can't hear me. I don't know. We, we may or may not be. Um, have lost our sound. I'm not really sure what that's about. See. Can somebody let us know if you can hear us? If you can't hear us, I might just start over. No. Let's see. There it is. Uh -oh. Can you hear me? Uh -oh. There yeah. we go. We're on. Sorry. Oh, I, yeah, you went. I don't know if it's because everybody's home or what, but the internet has been really bad. Even my, um, my, one of my phones connects to, uh, my CRM and yeah. I am having like copy phone calls and weird stuff. So well, I was talking if you have to, advice on that, just let me know too. I was talking to a buddy who works with Cisco and does a lot of it work. And he was just saying like, our internet system has never been stress tested for this kind of, you know, usage among the countries. So I think it's just honestly overloaded, to be honest with you. So, but stressful, everyone's, scary. Everyone's work working remotely. Yeah, but um, I, I wonder. Uh, I saw an article the other day that was talking about um, buying stock in Cisco. What do you think? You know, looking at different options. Hey, I know that it's not your your main job, but do you have any stocks yeah. that you're looking at? Um. <laughs> Thing, I mean, everything's on sale right now, obviously. Yeah, right? we've, had, we've had the biggest market um, performance day ever in the history of the market today. It was up 11% and change. 11 um, is my lucky number. Yeah, 11%. Um, but this is also coming in the same month that this is quite possibly, or actually was the worst month since the 30s, the first three weeks of March. So the, it's all wow. over the place at this point. I think it's going to continue to be volatile, honestly, through the summer. Um, unemployment numbers are going to come out in the fall, which is going to hurt. But um, there's a lot of opportunity out there, you know, especially wow. kind of what I was getting toward earlier is in low income years, this might be a really good opportunity for folks to take advantage of Roth accounts where they might oh, yeah. otherwise be outside that income limit. Um, uh, Roth conversions might be a good opportunity for folks. So really, you know, get together with your advisor or, or call me if you need um, someone to kind of look at your you know situation from a 30,000 foot level and say, you know, what's different in 2019? Are we, is this an outlier year from an income standpoint being low because of two or three months of lack of production? So, um, yeah, that's a good point. yeah. So it may, you know, there's certainly a lot of opportunities out there. Our firm doesn't specifically custody assets, but, um, we work with a network of independent advisors. So we do a fair amount of retirement planning, life insurance, um, you know, really working with yeah. our clients, doing more for less people is really what I try and um, try and handle, which is different from the CPA model that, you know, most of you guys are pretty familiar with. Yeah, so. that's so cool. You know, um, what was that type of life insurance that we, we discussed um, where it's tax deductible and it's life insurance and you can borrow against it later? What is that yeah, called? Yeah, so there's a couple different types term insurance is buying insurance for a period of time. It's like the most lean type of insurance. Um, it's the cheapest type of insurance. This is something that pretty much everyone should have across the board. Then your, your permanent insurance comes in twofold. You've got whole life policies and you have what's called indexed universal life. Um, that's kind of what we were referring to. Those are good for certain folks, um, especially, you know, uh, what we've had over the last three, four weeks, because the, um, the aspect of that uh, portfolio is invested in the market and it's actually credit protected as well as um, insured upon uh, down markets. Um, wow. uh, it's in insured against a market downturn. So 
if you have a 401k or an IRA in the market, you've lost 30, 35%. A lot of um, IUL, um, a lot of the aspects that are invested in the market are actually protected through things like options and puts. So um, you actually won't see your cash value decrease in value due to market performance. So for the right taxpayer, it may be a good opportunity. Yeah. Oh, you know, one thing um, besides that, I'm just thinking about things that I've yeah. learned from you that has been so helpful. I just can't, I'm thinking of so many different things, but the biggest thing that I think everyone gets so excited about when I start talking about my taxes and about you is last year when I sold my Tesla Model S and I bought the <laughs> X because it qualifies for a hundred percent bonus depreciation. Can you tell everybody a little bit yeah. more about that? Maybe for yeah, entrepreneurs. So the law changed in 2018. Obviously the tax law changed the first time since 1986. That's when I was born. What, what previously was known as a 179 deduction, which gave people basically the opportunity to deduct a large portion of a capital purchase like a car that has changed into what's called 168 168k bonus depreciation. So basically what it allows you to do is if you have a vehicle that's over 6,000 pounds, it's called gross vehicle rate rating. If you're over 6,000 pounds and the Tesla was, then you can offset 100% of that purchase upfront in the year that it's placed in service. So if you buy a car in January 1st of 2020, you could offset 100% of the value of that car against your business income in 2020. So that's crazy. It, yeah, it gives Plus people the acquisition costs, right? Like the closing costs, whatever you call it on the car taxes. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. I mean, those those essentially would, you know, would be deductible on the closing statement. But um, but cool. yeah, it's a, it's a great way to recover that cost up front. Um, if you, you have a, you know, a big year in 2020 and, you know, you, you need to to a little bit of relief, um, you know, capital purchases are great. I always tell people. You know, if you need a car and you need a write off, it's a great opportunity. You know, right. don't go out and just purchase a vehicle right. and purchase a more expensive vehicle. But being a business yeah. owner provides great, great relief, um, especially for for things that are mixed use like a vehicle would be. Yeah, that was a great one. And um, also for electric cars, I, are they going to be doing that electric credit that I got? I know that it's been reduced and reduced. Is it yeah. over yeah. last year or? Yeah. So no, it actually depends on the maker. So each, okay. each maker like Tesla is one of them, for example, they're only allotted so many credits from the feds. And mm -hmm. so because Tesla was really the first vehicle that came out and has become so popular, those credits are now being reduced year over year. So Tesla, for example, yeah. got reduced in January of 2019. And then in June of 2019, um, there's very few credits remaining on Tesla, but newer, you know, auto, auto, auto manufacturers like, you know, BMW came out with one, Porsche came out with one, oh, yeah. Nissan's got one. So if you're really looking for the credit, it's actually worth, you know, shopping around. But I mean, if you, if you want a Tesla, then go get a Tesla. It just, you know, the credits may be diminished by the time, by the time you purchase yeah. it, you already have it. Yeah. So, so you can't get the credit if you buy used, but you can use the, the bonus depreciation if you buy yeah, used. That's right. You can still so use bonus depreciation for used cars. Yeah. And so, so basically so, that, that one would lower your taxable income. The bonus depreciation lowers your taxable income, correct. but the credit yep. is actually a return. A re yeah. Refund. The, credits, the credits from the IRS. So um, like... For example, wow. Porsche has a brand new that's one cool. that's come to market. They're going to still have their full credits available to taxpayers. Tesla's just used up a lot of that credit because so many have hit the market over the last, you know, five, six, seven years. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Is so, there? I know I didn't ask you tell you I was going to ask you this, but is there any? Are there any other really great deductions that people might not think of, or yeah, you know, little tricks that you could um, give us? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, I'm a huge proponent of HSAs, um, especially for uh, uh, it's called the health savings account. So basically what it is, is it's just like a checking account that the IRS gives you a deduction for funding. So it's just think of it like a, an IRA where you contribute money into this account and the government gives you a tax deduction for it. The difference is 
when you contribute to your retirement accounts, you can't access it until you're 59 and a half. So, but an HSA, all of us are, have medical expenses, deductibles, co-insurance, co-pays, things like that. And so it's basically getting a benefit today from a tax standpoint, but we can actually use it today. So let's say you're going to go out and get, you know, LASIK surgery on your eyes. Well, if you were to use it with after tax dollars, well, then all of a sudden that becomes 20, 30 percent less expensive than it otherwise might be. So um, so I'm a huge proponent of HSAs, would highly recommend folks, you know, especially if you're young, you know, you can get a couple good years without any sort of, you know, major medical expense. And then you can really build up a pot of cash and really always have that security that you're not going to be um, forced to go truly out of pocket, you'll have that escrow account aside, basically. So yeah, um, okay. definitely. Yeah, it's a very That's simple cool. strategy, but really everyone should do it who's HSA eligible. So okay. Well, yeah. do you have anything else that you need for us to know um, that you can think of? And if not, then just tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Like I said, again, if anyone has any questions over what's been going on with the COVID-19 legislation, um, Google IRS notice 2020-18. It'll talk to you about the extensions. It's only like three pages. It's not going to be some boring tax code, I promise. Um, But uh, it's a three pages. It's an easy read. If you guys have any other questions, um, contact me directly. My email is dmiller at aspirecpagroup.com and that's A-S-P-I-R-E C-P-A group.com um, oh. and uh, reach out. Would be happy to talk to anybody. I will make sure and put a link to all of that yeah. in, the, yeah. in the post whatever you call it and um, thank you so much for giving us that information. I'll let you get back to what you're doing. <laughs> thank you, Katie. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. Hope everyone's you, staying, doing well. Have healthy. a good day. All right. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye, David. Okay. So that was really great. I know that he he's at home with his family, so I didn't want to keep him all night. But um, I just wanted to you guys to hear that stuff because I am such a nerd. I'm so into it because I once you have control of a stressful situation. And I'm sorry, my hair is just all over the place today. But once you have control of a stressful situation, like that feels like the worst thing in the world, for example, your entire business is not organizing. You have to do your taxes on time and you're running out of time, whatever. You don't want to be late, a deadline, a a financial situation. Once you figure out how to, how this stuff works, it's powerful. And then you have control over it and you're no longer stressed out. And then you can help other people, which is the great thing now. Um, there was a time I didn't even know what a PL was, a profit and loss statement. I did not understand QuickBooks and made me want to cry. So, and the more that you learn about this kind of stuff, the more that you can take advantage of all kinds of little um, creative tax savings and planning for your future. Like David Miller calls me and has tax planning sessions where we kind of estimate what it's going to look like and what I need to do to stay on track so that it's not like when I first started making money and all of a sudden I had to pay the IRS you know like twenty nine thousand dollars and then I didn't have a penny left in my account and I was like trying to figure out how I'm gonna you know eat (laughs) so I hope that that information helps you guys in one way or another and I really appreciate everybody tuning in and if anybody has advice for me on how to do this better I will not not ever get my feelings hurt I appreciate any feedback and you can tell me to stop touching my hair but it probably isn't gonna happen Um, So make sure that you guys click that little uh, bell thing so that you can get notified when we come on and hopefully we'll figure out how to tag each other in these things a little better. And follow us on Instagram at CareFirm and somewhere there's a YouTube channel with our step on it. And let's see what else I wanted to tell you. Oh, I'll, I'll put a link to our website explaining all the different ways that we're adapting as a brokerage, Katie Elton Associates Real Estate Brokerage, on how to... um, you know, how we're having contact list listing services. I just had a video listing appointment with a man in um, in coming and was showing, I was able to show the the recent comparables and see his property and schedule the photographer. We have situations where if somebody can't have the photographer come over, 
we can take your pictures and we actually have a company that we outsource to send the photos off to to have them edit. So whatever we can do to help you, we're not trying to be so in your face with this stuff, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows that this is available because it's just so stressful thinking, um, I might get laid off and I need to sell this house while the inventory is super low and nobody's has their house on the market. I know it's going to sell for more than it, you know, it usually would. And before I lose my job and can't pay the mortgage, I need to sell it. So I need to make myself available to you so that I can help you guys out with that kind of stuff. And uh, so don't forget, if you're anywhere in the U.S., give me a call or a message and I will help you. We have partner agents all over the country that we can refer you to that can use our same touchless, um, contactless procedures too, as well as our crazy awesome marketing plan. So that is all I have to say about that. And I do have a powerful message for you today that I just thought, hmm, what should I, what should I pick up at the last minute for you while I was real busy today? And then I remembered that I had this little book that sits around the, the 212 rule. Have you ever heard about that? So the thing is that water boils at 212 degrees, right? So well, I mean, I guess I just kind of messed it up. At 211 degrees, water is hot. At 212 degrees, it boils. And with boiling water comes steam. And with steam, you can power a train. So just think about that. One degree difference from hot to powering a train. So I'll just read it to you because um, I feel like I want to read stories like my kids are at their dad's house. <laughs> Just kidding. One degree. Applying one degree of temperature to water means the difference between something that's simply very hot and something that generates enough force to power a machine. A beautifully uncomplicated metaphor that ideally should feed our every endeavor, constantly pushing us to give the extra effort in every task, action, and effort we undertake. 212 serves as a forceful drill sergeant with its motivating and focused messages while adhering to a scientific law, a natural law, it reminds us that seemingly small things can make tremendous differences. So simple is the analogy that you can stop reading that right now, walk away with the opening thought firmly planted in your mind, and benefit from it for the rest of your life. So my point is, a tiny, 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 tiny difference such as one little degree one little degree makes such a huge difference. So if you think today, what little thing can I do that may be just a little tiny bit out of the ordinary or out of my comfort zone or even out of my way that might change somebody else's life? You really don't know because there is such a huge ripple effect. Every time you give somebody advice or you help somebody who needs help, or you say something positive and it's contagious. So why don't we sp start spreading a little bit more of that? Anyway, so tomorrow I have a special guest for you for episode number five. How did we get to five? I'm just gonna start doing this for the rest of my life every day. You guys are gonna be like, shut up. Um, but episode five, we have my friend Joe who has a roofing company in Raleigh, North Carolina. So that will be really cool because they're just kind of starting it up. And I thought it would be really interesting to talk about how a startup company could be affected, thrown into the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. So I hope everybody's staying safe. Don't touch your face. It's incredible how much we touch our faces now that we're having to track and measure our face touching. Have a great evening. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Stop streaming.